this week's Soil Science Seminar, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Chen Yi Luo. Chen Yi is a native of China, and she grew up in a northwest province called Gansu, in a city called Lanzhou. Chen Yi is a graduate of Gansu Agricultural University with a bachelor's degree. She got a master's degree in soil science here at Iowa State University, and I believe she's our department's uh, latest PhD candidate because she just passed her oral prelim yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Chen, Chen is a delightful woman, and I encourage you to get to know her before she graduates. Today she's going to, going to describe to us this uh, material that she calls CGR, that she's going to say, tell us about its impact on soil physical properties and plant growth. Let's welcome Chenny. Uh, thank you, Dr. Houghton, for introducing me. Uh, my research topic is the effects of uh, low surface concrete grinding residue on selected soil and plant properties. Uh, first, what is a uh, low surface concrete grinding residue? Uh, to answer this question, I would like to introduce a progress called diamond grinding. Um, diamond grinding is a technique to smooth the road surface, and uh, uh, it will use uh, uh, spaced diamond saw blades. Uh, it's hard to uh, understand, but, he but here I would like to uh, Explain as this way: When you driving on a, when you driving on the road without diamond grinding, especially for the pavement uh, concrete roads, you will hear a lot of noise like thump thump thump. But after diamond grinding, you will drive on the roads uh, with no bumping. And uh, here, these two pictures shows uh, what the what the road look like after diamond grinding and it will have the spe special texture on the road, road surface. Uh, the, the, here I list several diamond grinding uh, benefits, and uh, I would like to say uh, diamond grinding will uh, remove the roughness of the road surface, and uh, it can uh, reduce traffic noise, and with the special texture on the road surface, it will help drain the water on the road surface then improve the road longevity. Uh, this machine here, we see it's a diamond grinding machine. Um, during the diamond grinding process, there is a byproduct called concrete grinding residue. Uh, we usually call CGR. Uh, CGR is a mixture of water and uh, particles of concrete and uh, aggregate residue. These two pictures shows how CGR look like, and we can also call CGR slurry. Uh, the picture on your left side shows slurry in the bucket, and the picture show on your right side shows uh, we can use our hand to feel the texture of the CGR. Uh, why, we, why should we care about CGR? Uh, here has some background information. Uh, in Utah State, they have projected in 1989 and 1990s, and they, they did diamond grinding for 614 kilometers. And during this process, uh, there, uh, there was, uh, there was uh, 2,447 cubic uh, meters of solid waste. So we can imagine, we can imagine that uh, this is just one state and with one uh, interstate highway. Um, then, uh, how about the, the whole United States and uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of highways. And, uh, you know, diamond grinding is a common, common uh, process when construct uh, the roads or improve the road quality. And some states, they allow the constructor to uh, deposit the, the CGR along the roads, roadside, but some states, they forbidden that. Like Iowa, we, we don't allow the person, we don't allow the constructor to dump in the slurry along the roadside, but for Minnesota, they can, they can dump in the slurry on the roadside. And we can see these two pictures shows the collect, uh, collected tank dumping the slurry on the roadside. 
then we may wondering, are there any potential environment issues? Okay, uh, to answer that question, we may first look at the property of CGR. CGR has high pH, usually 9.4 to 12.5, and high alkalinity, uh, the uh, effective calcium carbonate equivalent about 28%. Uh, and uh, in this uh, in this table, I show some heavy metal concentrations. I just list several for reference. We can see we have a copper, a nick, lead, and so on. Um, for the previous study, uh, there are not many literatures about CGR uh, effect on the soil and plant properties. Uh, what we can learn is uh, CG, uh, is uh, when the peop when people dumping the slurry on the soil and the pH in the soil usually about 7.6 to 8.9 and the EC usually about 0 0.21 to 3.09 ds per meter and uh, people are focused on the alkalinity and the heavy, metri heavy metal concentration. I think these are all chemical properties. Then uh, how about the physical properties and the plant properties? Unfortunately, there are not many complete uh, studies about these properties. So for our study, uh, the goal of our study is to gain a better understanding on how, uh, how soil physical and plant properties respond to the CGR application. Uh, we have two objectives. The first one, we will conduct uh, a control field experiment and roadside measurement to evaluate the effects of CGR on soil book density, saturated hydraulic conductivity, uh, infiltrability, and uh, plant property like uh, plant species, biomass. And uh, we will have a, a greenhouse study to uh, investigate more CGR effects on the plant properties like uh, seedling emergence rate, biomass, and we will also uh, measure the soil pH and the EC in our greenhouse study. So our CGR was collected uh, from the city called Apple Valley in Minnesota, and we have uh, we collected uh, 32 buckets of slurry, and the picture shows here uh, there are three pictures of here. The first one, we have 32 buckets, and the second one, the workers helped us to get the uh, CGR from the collection tank. And uh, this is CGR in the buckets, okay? Um, the CGR for our uh, studies, the pH is uh, 11.4, and the solid fraction is 44%. Uh, 40, and uh, the particle size analysis uh, table is like this. We the CGR has a uh, uh, thirty nine percent of thirty nine percent of sand size, uh, uh, and the fifty three percent of silt size, and eight percent of uh, clay size. Uh, next, to look at our control field experiment. Our control ex uh, our experiment site is in Katy Farm, northwest of Ames, and we have uh, four CGR rates. 0, 10, 20, uh, 14 tons per acre. And we have four replications for each rate. And the picture on your left side shows our experiment design. And uh, we use a random complex block design. Uh, and uh, here are four blocks. Block one, block two, and block three, block, uh, block two, block one, block two, block three, block four. Sorry. And uh, we just uh, randomly assign each treatment into one block. And uh, uh, this picture shows the map of the Kelly farm. And we can see there are 16 plots in this picture. And for, uh, for, the, uh, plot, for each plot, uh, the diameter is 2 meter by 2 meter. And uh, uh, the buffered area between the plots are 2 meters. And uh, here we mold the area so you can see the 16 plus, obviously. Uh, the soil in Katy Farm is a clarion soil and uh, we did the uh, particle size analysis. Uh, the clarion soil contains 49% uh, sand, 32% uh, silt, and 19% clay. The so texture class 
class is a uh, loom. And uh, for the uh, soil sampling, we use 7.6 diameter by 7.6 height alumina ring. And we just uh, uh, thermed the upper and the lower soil surface and covered the soil sample with alumina foil sealed with the electric tape. And uh, those, those samples we uh, bring back to the lab and we will do, we did the book density and saturated hydraulic conductivity. Uh, here is uh, uh, the samples in the vacuum chamber, and we uh, use vac we uh, we just uh, decrease the pressure inside the vacuum chamber and get the air out of the soil and wet the soil from the bottom. And next picture shows we did saturated hydraulic conductivity. Uh, third one, we put our soil sample in the oven to measure the soil book density. On the equation for saturated hydraulic conductivity, we use Darcy's law, Ks equals to Q divided A times T uh, and times L divided H. So Q is the volume of outflow. Uh, A is a soil sectional, uh, cross-sectional area. T is time. L is the length of soil core. H is a hydraulic hand. For the infiltrability, we use the Cornell sprinkle infiltrometer. Here is the layout of the uh, infiltrometer. We will give us, us uh, we will give amount of water into the uh, in, into the infiltrometer and let the uh, water drain from the bottom. With certain of, with a certain amount of time, there is a runoff from the uh, from the soil sample, and then we can record our data. Um, and after uh, several after a certain amount of time, we will have a steady flow. Uh, we will have steady data from the drainage. Then we will know there is a steady flow from the infiltrometer here. This is a canal sprinkle infiltrometer marrow infiltration in the Kelly farm. And uh, for infiltra infiltrability uh, calculation, we use this equation, IT equals R ring minus R off times 0 0.8. R ring is a steady rainfall flux. R off is steady surface runoff rate. 0 0.8 is correction factor for one dimension flow for a loam. For plant uh, measurement, we did plant identification. We use one meter by 15 centimeter cone drought and uh, we, identif we identified uh, each species uh, coverage by this uh, percentage, zero to one, one to five, five to fi 25, 25 to 15, 15 to 75, 75 to 95. And this picture shows a uh, postdoc in this department for nurse. She helped me to do the plant identification. She worked for Dr. Lieberman and she's an expert to do the plant identification. So appreciate for her help. And next, uh, for the plant biomass, we use a 15 centimeter times 25 centimeter cone drought. And uh, we just uh, uh, sample the above ground uh, part of the plants. And uh, this picture shows how the cone drought look like. And we just cut the uh, vegetation inside this cone drought. Next, for the measurement time, we have four field measurement times. One is uh, we before we dump in the we, before we put the CGR into the Kelly farm. Uh, second one is uh, one month after we put the CGR into the farm, and the uh, uh, third one is uh, six months after we put the CGR. Uh, last one is uh, twelve months, one year after we put the CGR into Kelly farm, and two. Plant identification time, one is before CGR applying, another is uh, 10 months after CGR applying. So <clears throat> for the hypothesis, first we want to test the effects of block factors. So the known hypothesis is uh, the, block, blo the blocks have a non-significant effects on the mirrored values. The alternative hypothesis is at least one block has significant effects on the mirrored value. So this is our linear additive model. Y equals to mu plus B. B is block factor plus error. Next hypothesis, we want to test the effect of treatment CGR rates factor. Then we have these two uh, hypothesis. One is non-hypothesis. The treatment have a non-significant effect on the measurement value. 
Next is one or more CGR rates have a significant effect on the Maryland value. This is our linear X model. Y equals mu plus B block factor T treatment plus error. Okay, let's look at the data. Uh, the X axis is measurement time. The Y axis is the sample density gram per cubic centimeter. And the red is 10 per Red represents uh, zero tons per acre. Blank, blank uh, represents yeah. Blank represents uh, ten tons per acre. Blue, twenty tons per acre. Uh, green, fourteen tons per acre. Uh, from this, uh, from this figure, we can see the cell bulk density uh, uh, not change too much throughout the uh, measurement times, which indicates that. Soil bulk density is a really steady property for the soil. And next, uh, for the saturated hydraulic conductivity, the x axis is measurement time, y axis is the log transferred saturated hydraulic conductivity data, uh, centimeter per second. And the uh, red, zero tons per acre, blank, 10 tons per acre, uh, blue, 20 tons per acre, and green, 14 tons per acre. And uh, we can say after we dump in the spawning, and there is a trend uh, shows the uh, after we dump in the slurry, the uh, saturated hydraulic conductivity slightly decreasing with the measurement time. Next, for the infiltrability, uh, still x axis is the measurement time, y axis is log transferred infiltrability data centimeter per second. And uh, we can see after, uh, we, after we put slurry in the field, there is the chain looks like uh, there is a select, selectly increasing of uh, infiltrability throughout the three, three, three measurement time. Next, for the plant biomass, axis is the measurement time, y axis biomass gram. Um, here, I would like to emphasize, I would like to illustrate, uh, we cannot compare the biomass throughout, throughout this measurement time. We can do the comparison uh, with different treatment in one measurement time, because uh, when, we, uh, when we do the plant biomass, uh, we just, uh, we just uh, mold the field into 12 inches. So we can say uh, here is a decreasing because we measure the, uh, we measure the plant biomass on November and uh, it should be decreasing if by the end of the plant growing stages. Yeah. And after and the, the six months uh, and the 12 months after we applied CGR, we didn't mold the field. So there is an increasing change here. Okay. Uh, next, for our ANOVA uh, analysis, we can see the yellow area is the different treatment and the and the response and the uh, responses uh, bulk density, saturated hydraulic conductivity, infiltration, infiltrability, and biomass. And the green area shows different measurement times. The blue area shows the uh, data that we uh, that we average the, the re replications. Here, let's look at the p-value. The p-value uh, with purple area shows the uh, block effect, uh, uh, block factor uh, that effect on the uh, different uh, soil uh, physical and plant properties. We can see all the p-value are larger than 0 0.05, which indicates block do not have significant influence on the uh, on those properties. And the pink area shows uh, with the different measurement time and the different treatment, uh, uh, how different, what is the p-value for the different treatment. We can see all the p-values are larger than 0 0.05. So we can summary, CGR had a non-significant influence on the on soil physical and the plant properties from the p-value. Here is uh, uh, the uh, plant identification table. We have more than 21. We have more than 21 plant uh, species, but I 
uh, but uh, at least uh, uh, the most common plant species uh, here, uh, we can see it's hard for you to look at each plant species, uh, plant species name, but uh, I just want to you have some uh, sense about the chain. First, uh, we have cool season grass, legume, and fog, and uh, warm season grass. And uh, we have a uh, different treatment, ten, uh, zero tons per acre, 10 tons per acre, 10 tons per acre, and 14 tons per, per acre. And uh, the, red bar sh the red bar shows the increasing of the certain plant species after 10 months with dumping the slurry. The green bar shows the decreasing that the certain plant species uh, uh, after we dumping the slurry for the 10 months. So we can see um, there is not obvious uh, change uh, after we dumping the slurry because for different treatments, there is an uh, increasing and decreasing plant species. And the CGR didn't uh, have a very, didn't have a significant influence on one variety of the plants. So for the control field experiment summary, uh, there was there was no significant uh, difference of uh, CGR on soil physical and uh, uh, pr physical and plant properties based on the p-value. Then let's look at the roadside measurement. The roadside measurement uh, we uh, we did all the experiment in uh, near the Austin in Minnesota. Uh, we measured soil bulb density saturated hydraulic conductivity, infiltrability, and plant biomass. This is the layout uh, that we did the experiment. We can see the gray belt shows slurry effect area, and the white belt shows non-slurry area. And we have uh, three sides and uh, uh, two points for each side, which we can do the pair t-test. So first one, A1, B1, second A2, B2, third A3, B3. And we can see the A1 is five feet uh, from the shoulder, and the B1 is five feet from the A1. And the uh, size distance is uh, one, 114 feet. Uh, this is uh, uh, because the Minnesota DOT, they were dumping the slurry in 2013. So it was uh, three, more than three years ago. So we can see the slurry transports to the shallow soil surface from these two pictures. Slurry still near the soil surface there. Okay. And the next picture shows uh, the samples uh, with slurry and without slurry. So it's really obvious. We can see the slurries on the top and the non-slurries in the soil sample. Okay. Uh, for the particle size analysis for the row side, uh, the three side and the six point, we can see uh, their, the texture are pretty similar from this table. They are all, uh, the texture class, that they are all known. And for our pair t-test, uh, for our pair t-test table, we can see the yellow area shows the different the different treatment, slurry, uh, slurry area and non-slurry area, and the different responses, uh, bulk density, saturated hydraulic conductivity, infiltrability, and biomass. Um, here, this, uh, this two green area shows the uh, sample point and the slope. The uh, blue area shows the data that we uh, average the, our replications. Okay, here is a p-value. We, we noticed that uh, there, there, uh, there was significant differences of CGR on soil bulb density and saturated hydraulic conductivity. Then we may uh, conclude that CGR significantly increased soil bulk density and decreased saturated hydraulic conductivity by this pair t-test. Uh, we may wondering is that slope have uh, also have the effects on this. So we did a further data analysis. We want to use ANOVA, so we want to test the effects of the treatment and the slope factor. Our non hypothesis is the, the treatment and slope have non significant effects on the marrow values 
Alternative hypothesis is the treatment and slope has significant effects on the marital value. This is, a, this is our linear active model. Y equals mu plus B is block factor plus T treatment factor. S is slope factor. T uh, times S is interaction of treatment and slope. Last is error. Okay, let's look at our ANOVA table. So here we can see uh, these are different uh, factors and different treatment. The green shows we uh, we treat the three sites as uh, three blocks. And this is our measurement data. Okay, let's look at p-value. So we still, we can see here, slurry have significant effect on soil bulk density and saturated hydraulic conductivity. However, slope and the interaction of slurry and slope does not have significant effects on the soil bulk density and saturated hydraulic conductivity. Okay, to summary, CGR can, in, uh, can increase soil bulk density and decrease saturated hydraulic conductivity from our roadside experiment. And there was no significant influence of CGR on the infiltrability and the plant biomass. Third part is a greenhouse study. The objective for greenhouse study, we want to investigate the effects of CGR on early plant growth. So we, uh, so we measured seedling emergence rate and 16-day biomass. Uh, we have a four plant species, Canada well rain for cool season grass, Indian, uh, Indian grass for the warm season grass, uh, well bergamot for the uh, non legume fob, and uh, partridge bee for the legume. Our experiment site is a greenhouse, agronomic greenhouse, and we still have a, a four CGR rates. 0, 10, 20, 14 tons per acre, and we have two application methods. One is we put slurry on the soil surface, another we mix slurry with the soil. So uh, here we total have uh, seven treatments for each plant species. Uh, we didn't re repeat 0 tons per acre, so we have seven treatments. And uh, we have four applications per treatment per plant species. Then the total parts of our greenhouse study is 112 parts. The soil for our greenhouse study is nicolate soil. This is a, a, a soil particle analysis table. We can see the soil has a 33% sand, 41% silt, 26% of clay, and the classification is the loam. And we, the pot size is uh, 10.2 centimeter di uh, by 10.2 height, centimeter height. Our sample pre preparation, we use uh, dry, uh, we use dry mass. So for each pot, we have 400 grams of dry soil and dry slurry. And we have 25 seeds in each pot. This is the first day we put the uh, pot we put all the parts in the greenhouse uh, for this one. This picture shows the Canada well rain, the cool season grass. Uh, we can see these treatments are slurry on the soil surface. Uh, from here to here is 14 tons per acre, 20 tons per acre, 10 tons per acre, and 0 tons per acre. And this, these are uh, slurry mixed with soil. From here to here, 0, 10, 20, 14 tons per acre, okay? This picture shows uh, after 13 days uh, what is uh, the plant look like. And we can see this one is for the Canada well rain. And uh, uh, from this figure, uh, we can see the, we can see the uh, slurry on the soil. So, uh, the slurry mixed with soil has more vegetation than the slurry on the soil surface. In the middle is the control. Okay. This one is for the Indian grass. Um, and we can hit, for the Indian grass, here we can see the slurry on the soil surface has, has more uh, vegetation than the slurry mixed with soil. And uh, in the middle is still the control one. Next is for the well bergment, um, not many, not, uh, not many species uh, 
germinate, and uh, just so we can see in the control line, we, we can see some plants. Okay. <clears throat> Last one for the partridge pea. Uh, uh, we can see the slurry on the soil surface has more uh, vegetation compared to the slurry w mixed with the soil. Okay, for the data collection, we count the em uh, seedling emergence uh, rate every day, and uh, until we d until the 16 days, we c just uh, cut the above ground uh, plant for the bio biomass measurement. And for the seedling emergence rate, we use the number of seeds emerged that divided the total number of seeds. And uh, uh, our hypothesis is uh, we want to test the treatment uh, CGR rates. Uh, the non-hypothesis is the CGR rates have no significant have non significant difference on the seedling emergence rate. Alternative hypothesis is one or more of CGR rates have significant differences on seedling emergence rate for at least one variety of plant. This is a linear active model. T is a treatment factor. Next uh, hypothesis is that we want to test the, the treatment for the 16 days biomass. We can see the non hypothesis is that the CGR uh, rates have a non significant difference on the 16 days biomass. The altern alternative hypothesis is one or more CGR rates have significant differences on the 16, 16 days biomass, at least uh, for one variety of plant. This is our linear active model. T is treatment. Okay, let's look at the results for the uh, for the statistical measurement. So at x axis is tr treatment, we have a seven treatments here. And the y axis is the seedling emergence rate. So we from this figure we can see the control one has a uh, uh, control one has significantly uh, differences compared to the uh, top twenty and top ten. And uh, here the mix the changing. It's uh, smaller than other treatment. And uh, for the Indian grass, the control one is significantly smaller than other five treatments, except the mixed 40. For the wild bergamot, the mixed 10 has significant uh, smaller compared to the top 20 and the top 10. For, for the partridge pea, we can see the top ten significantly larger than other uh, uh, other six treatment. Next, uh, let's look at 16 days biomass. For the Canada well ring, still the control one was uh, a significantly smaller than the top 20, top 10, and uh, the mixed 20 and the mixed 14. And for the Indian grass, we can see the control one was uh, significantly smaller than the top 10 and, uh, and uh, top 14, top 20, top 10, and uh, uh, yeah, the rest of the treatments. And the top 10 was significantly larger than other uh, six treatments. For, for the wild bergamot, uh, the top 10 and the control have significant differences. This is partridge P. Uh, still, uh, the top ten have significant differences compared to other six treatments. Then we can summary our greenhouse study. CGR had significant increasing effect on the seedling and the 16-day biomass for the uh, three of four plant species. Overall, uh, for the control field experiment, the CGR. Do not, uh, the for the control field experiment, CGR do not have a significant uh, uh, effect on the soil and the plant properties. And the roadside experiment shows the CGR significantly increased the soil bulk density and significantly decreased uh, the saturated hydraulic conductivity. And for the greenhouse study, uh, CGR can increase the seedling emergence rate and the 16-day biomass for the three or four plant species. Then we can make our conclusion. CGR will not lead a very serious problem, environmental problem for the perspective of soil physical and plant properties. 
uh, and CGR can somehow increase the uh, saline emergence rate and the 16 days biomass for some plant uh, varieties. Our ongoing work, we will explore further data analysis for the influence of CGR on saline emergence and 16 days biomass. And we will also measure the uh, soil chemical properties uh, like pH and EC in the greenhouse study. Uh, here I would like to thank my uh, major professor, Dr. Houghton, and all my committees, and thanks for my colleagues, colleagues who helped me, and uh, uh, I would like to thank the uh, Minnesota DOT supported me, supported the project. Thank you, and uh, questions? Okay. First of all, thank you for your presentation. It was wonderful. And uh, regarding my question goes to your last study of the greenhouse gas experiment. I wonder if uh, the depth uh, that you play the seeds be fair among the species, or do you just play them on the surface? Or I don't know which depth is you um, put the seeds on these parts. Uh, we have a full variety of uh, okay, Carolina, she's wondering uh, what, what's the soil depth that we plant our uh, seeds. So uh, we have four variety of uh, uh, plant species. Uh, the smallest seeds is well bergament, which, which is uh, about 0 .0, 0 0.5 uh, me, uh, millimeter. So it's pr really, really small. So for this one, we just uh, uh, put the seeds on the soil surface and we just uh, put a very thinner layer of soil on, on the on the seeds. And for the um, and for the Canada well rain and the Indian grass, these two seeds are bigger. It's uh, it's like uh, the length of the seeds is like uh, one centimeter. And uh, so for this one I just uh, put the seeds like a zero point uh, like a, a it's about 0 0.5 centimeters into the soil, okay? And uh, for the partridge pea, it's like a small square seed. Uh, the diameter for that one is uh, about 0. Uh, uh, 0, uh, let's say 0 0.2 centimeter by 0 0.2 centimeter. It's about this size. So I still put this seed about 0. 0.2 five centimeters of the soil. So I try to uh, put all the seeds uh, in the shallow, like on the, in the shallow uh, soil layer, like that. Okay. I think you did a great job. So just clarification. So for the film experiment, CGR did or did not have an effect on soil? Because on that slide, I think it said did, but did, did not, sorry. Did not yeah, 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 yeah. Just a typo error, sorry. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor. I have two questions. Why is uh, why the CGR have different effects on soil population on the two sides, at the green part and the other side? Uh, okay. So the first uh, question, uh, he was asking why CGR have a, uh, have a different uh, effect on the Katy farm and on the roadside. Mm -hmm. Okay, on K first, I would like to answer your question like this way. In Katy farm, uh, this is our controlled field experiment. So we know how much CGR we were applying. And uh, we have a background uh, uh, measurement for the Katy farm, like uh, uh, we did the soil bulb density, saturated hydraulic conductivity, infiltrability, and the biomass. We, before we put the uh, CGR. And, uh, and after we put the CGR, we have three measurement time, one month, uh, half year, and one year. So our data from the, the control field uh, is, uh, after the statistical analysis, we found uh, all the p-value are larger than 0 0.05, so there are no significant difference. But for the, however, for the roadside experiment, the Minnesota DOT is dumping the slurry on the roads, roads along the roadside, 
and uh, we don't know how much CGR they were dumping in 2013, and uh, it kind of a long long term effect uh, how uh, CGR uh, you know affects soil and the plant properties. And the soil type, uh, I would like to emphasize here, for the road construction, they usually have the soil. Uh, they usually have the artificial soil for the roadside, okay? But for the control field, we can say we, uh, the soil texture is cli clarion soil and the soil texture are really pretty different from the roadside. So many, many factors that cause the differences of these two sides. So I think for the accuracy of the control field experiment should be uh, reliable and uh, you know, more reasonable. Yeah. Okay. The second question is, do you explain why the CGR increase the density and the increase the pixel for the other side? Uh, here, I think, I think maybe you just say the opposite way. Okay, so CGR increased the soil bulk density and decreased the saturated hydraulic conductivity. Yeah. Um, just uh, okay. Just uh, think simply assume that when you add some uh, particles into the soil, it should be increase uh, the soil bulk density because you add some particles, soil particles. And uh, uh, for here, uh, we did some. We did the measurement. We can see the uh, we can see the original data. The bulk density for the CGR effect area larger than the non-CGR area. And the original data from here, we can see the, the K-side of second hydraulic connectivity for the CGR area was smaller than the non-CGR area. And from the statistical an analysis, the p-value was smaller than was smaller than the 0 0.05, so there is significant differences. So this is why. Yeah, okay. I have one comment and one question. Okay. So this is also the comment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It's very obvious and I understood almost everything. Uh, you know, when we saw the uh, CGR pH, it's a very high pH. Yeah. The effective density of the global is 20%. So I don't know why we do not use it as a lightning material. So instead of just dumping them roads or storing them somewhere, we can dry them and use them as a material. And the question is, mm -hmm. uh, because of my interest in something, I uh, see uh, what's going on. I did see in your experiment in the uh, Cali farm and the greenhouse that adding, applying CGR increased the emergence rate and the violence. So, what do you think? Why? Why is that? Okay, uh, that's a really good question. <laughs> so, to uh, first, I like your comments, and uh, uh, but uh, here I would like to give you some uh, like background information about CGR. You know, CGR usually we come from the uh, pavement cement, well, which which the uh, constructor they usually use one called the Portland cement. This is a standard uh, cement, and uh, uh, different states they may just uh, mix this Portland cement with a flash, a fly, a fly ash, fly ash. So uh, that's why CGR may contain some heavy metal concentrations. Then, uh, if we use CGR as lime, maybe we were uh, concerned about the heavy metal concentrations on our crops. So. Uh, I think uh, the DOT, different states DOT, they can, they dumping the CGR on the roadside uh, will not affect a lot of, you know, crops because the roadside uh, plants usually are prairie. It's a different uh, variety of prairies. So we don't harvest the grass along the roadside. And uh, to answer the, your question, next question, uh, why CGR has a significant different, significant increase in 
of uh, uh, bio, plant biomass and the emergence seedling, seedling emergence rate? Um, it's a really good question. Uh, so that's why I want to do a further ex experiment. I want to see uh, what is uh, soil pH and soil EC for the uh, for the greenhouse study. Uh, but uh, one literature I read from a professor called uh, Disrupter, he did a greenhouse study and he did the biomass measurement for, uh, and uh, he got the nine, 19, nine zero days biomass from a very big uh, pot. It contains 1.25 kilograms of soil. So here we have, we just have a small uh, pot. And what he found is, uh, he said some uh, uh, slurry can apply the um, non trained uh, chemicals for the plants. It's like a slurry can pl uh, apply uh, some mi micronutrients for the plants to grow. This is uh, one funding from Dr. Dishwater from North Dakota. Um, so here, my study is still, you know, ongoing, so I want to investigate why slurry has this kind of uh, effect on the plant properties, especially in the greenhouse study. Thank you. Okay, so can I follow up please? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my question was about uh, why the biomass and emergence rate increased with applying CGR, and you explained that the cement is okay. a good portion of the CGR, and that's true. Well, uh, in terms of using it as a lighting material, we can use it to uh, to increase or to uh, yeah to raise the pH of the soils that uh, that have uh, bio energy crops, like switch rails, like you know the unedible uh, crops, not poor. So we will not have a concern about the uh, heavy metals in there, but. Why the biomass increased? I think the increase was very obvious in the grasses. And I think the reason for that is the silicon concentration in the, in the CGR. Okay. The grasses are avid consumers of silicon. And if you provide silicon to uh, these grasses, they will grow better. And if you uh, take a look at your, uh, your data, you will find that the Canada rye grass and the Indian grass, both of them had more uh, increase of the biomass compared to the other two uh, plants. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the silicon concentration is the reason. Okay. So in your greenhouse study, the next study, if you measure yeah. the silicon concentration in the soil and in the plant, you will find problem. You may find, you know, a correlation between silicon concentration and the growth of the grass. Okay, good suggestion. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dr. Thompson. Uh, I, I also have two questions. The, the first one has to do with the greenhouse study. Okay. When you apply the CGR to the surface mm -hmm. of the pods, what is the thickness of the CGR and did it form a crust on the surface of the soil? Yeah. Uh, Is it kind of like a cement? Yeah, Us? you're right. It's like, a, a, what's the word like? What's the word? Mulch. Mulch. You know, on the, on the, on the uh, soil surface, especially for the high rates of CGR. Uh, so I think it's also maybe possible help the seeds emerge, you know, germinate. Did they have any trouble getting through the crust? Oh, uh, no, no, no. My question about the, the field study yeah. has to do with um, the impact of plants growing in the soil on bulk density and hydraulic conductivity. Mm -hmm. um, my, my intuition would be that while the plants are growing, the roots are going down through the soil, that kind of changes the bulk density and might change the saturated hydraulic conductivity of the soil at the same time. So in your p-values, when you look at the impact 
of the CGI application, give you control for the effect of biomass, uh, the biomass growth, uh, at the same time we were looking at the statistical impact of the CGI. Uh, so, uh, I, let, let me think of your question, okay, uh, so I think when we uh, put slurry uh, in the kitty farm and uh, uh, we, we just, uh, we're trying to apply CGR uh, uniformly in each plot, but for the uh, biomass, we didn't, uh, oh, we didn't control that one. We measured the biomass. Yeah, we measured the biomass, the, but. The uh, above ground biomass were proportional to the below ground biomass. That would be an assumption. Yeah. But we could then test the hypothesis that the biomass had an effect on the saturated hydraulic fluid for the bulk density, control for that, and then look at the impact of the CGR on the control of the, it would be like an analysis of color. Okay. Might be That's a good suggestion. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. All right, everybody. I think we've reached uh, the uh, five o'clock hour, so let's move.